Today on the bench is an iPad Pro 12.9 inch 5th generation. Everything looks perfect with the exception of the charging port. It's decided that it simply doesn't feel like working anymore. I've got a brand new charging port and I'm going to walk you through replacing it. So let's get this slab of glass and aluminum over to the heating pad. Surprisingly, the iPad just barely fits on the mat. I'll let it cook for a few minutes at about 50 degrees Celsius to soften up the adhesive holding the screen in place. Wearing a stylish heat resistant glove allows me to touch the spicy hot glass and adhere a suction cup to the center. This tool will allow me to provide upward lifting force to the display while I run a razor blade around the edges. When the razor blade is inserted, it creates a very small localized pressure point on the tempered glass. Too much pressure and a poof of powdery pulverized glass is likely to pop out along with, well, shattered glass. By using a suction cup, I can redistribute some of that pressure, while also keeping the glass from resealing itself on the adhesive. A few drops of high concentration isopropyl alcohol will temporarily take away the tape's ability to stick, and the razor blade will glide through it smoothly. While this iPad technically opens like a book, don't get too excited and tear it open like a fresh novel. There is a wonderful little ribbon flex that connects near the front facing camera assembly. This U-shaped ribbon design is smart because it completely removes the risk of being creased and damaged, but it also makes it infinitely weaker to lifting stresses. Pull too far and this will tear like paper. Two Phillips screws keep the connector firmly planted under this tiny aluminum shield. Because we can't lift the display up further than this, it helps if you have a short driver, otherwise you'll be accessing the screws at an uncomfortable angle. The LEGO style connector can be popped free with some pointy tweezers or a spudger. Remember, the battery hasn't been disconnected yet and shorting things is still possible. Once free, the display can be lifted up to the full 45 degree tilt. You don't want to lift it further than this. We've got to disconnect the battery and these display ribbons, in that order. First we'll peel off this absolutely silly large graphite thermal pad that covers the entire board. This reveals even more graphite stickers below. Disconnecting the battery is as simple as removing the single Phillips screw. Just above that connector is a shield holding some display ribbons down. That shield is held in with two more screws. Once removed, you can use pointy tweezers to pop the connectors up from the board. In theory, you don't need to fully remove the screen for this repair, but I'll be redoing all the adhesive, so the display needs to go. Down to the bottom of the device is a large aluminum shield shaped vaguely like the state of New Mexico, if turned on its side. It's held in with five more screws. Really nice of Apple to not mix screw types between Phillips and Triwings on this one. With the shield removed, I can disconnect the last two display ribbons from the board. Now our target, the charging port. It's held in with two Phillips screws on either side, just like a classic iPad port. But in a strange twist of Apple's standard soldered on charging flex, this one is on a Lego style connector. I'll give them one bonus point for that. This connector is not only beefy, but it's held down by some adhesive as well. They really don't want this thing to move. I'll slip my replacement port into the slot left on the frame and make sure the ribbon connects properly. Now the two retaining screws can be installed. After replacing the adhesive around the frame, it's time for some reassembly. I'll get the display ribbons reconnected near the charging port and tighten down the shield. During this exciting process, I'll take a second to ask you to subscribe and comment down below if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful. Also a big thanks to my supporter over on Patreon, the other Chris. We could change that supporter into supporters with your help. Two more display ribbons near the battery are reconnected and their shield tightened down with those two screws. Finally, the battery screw is the only thing standing between us and a successful repair. Oh, and that tiny flex that goes from the camera assembly back up to the display. We'll get that off camera. With everything sealed back up, all that's left to do is charge it up before returning it to the customer. Thanks for watching. Check out the channel for more repair guides and other fun videos on 3D printing, and I'll see you next time.